new direction. Gray Boy, D. Lawrence, choir music. It's a Chicago thing. Hey. When they what? That's right, y'all. Tell them about it.
Praise the Lord, New Direction. Happy Sunday morning to you this morning. Come on, let's clap our hands and bless the name of the Lord. Psalm 50 says, Lord, you are awesome. How many know you serve an awesome God on this morning? Come on, put those hands together with me. Come on, help me sing it. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. Come on, lift your voice and say, Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. If it wasn't for your love, wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. If it wasn't for your love, was it for your grace? I don't know where I'd be without you. Lord, you are awesome. Come on, lift your voice and say, Lord, you are awesome. Hey, Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. If it wasn't for your love, wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. If it wasn't for your love, wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Come on, help me say, Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. If it wasn't for your love, was it for your grace? I don't know where I'd be without you. If it wasn't for your love, was it for your grace? I don't know where I'd be without you. Come on, clap those hands and bless the name of the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Good morning, New Direction, Church of God of Christ. We're so grateful that you are with us on this morning. We praise God for the blessings of the Lord. Our God is great and he's worthy to be praised. Before we do anything on this morning, why don't you put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, in your household, wherever you may be, thank him and remember his goodness and all that he's done for us. I wish somebody would shout hallelujah. Put it in the comment section. Come on, just type that one word, hallelujah, with a couple of exclamation parts, uh, marks behind it. God is worthy to be praised. I trust you've had an opportunity now to say good morning to the rest of the saints as we come together virtually one more time to worship our God. Thank God for the wonderful fellowship we have here at New Direction Church. I just certainly enjoy our worship services together. Also, our Bible studies on Wednesday night. What a great time. Uh, we had this past Wednesday. May God richly bless you. Please be in prayer concerning our nation, our, our, our officials, our president, vice president, and all of those who are in Congress making decisions. Uh, uh, the reopening things are opening up. We're praying concerning the vaccines and what have you. Uh, our faith and our confidence is in our God who is worthy of all of the praise. The psalmist said, Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Watch this. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, the Lord that had made heaven and earth. Bless thee out of Zion. Hallelujah. What a wonderful God we serve. We're going to have a good time in the Lord on today. I trust that you're ready. You're all set, ready to go to give God some praise and get a word from the Lord to sing uh, with the choir and have a good time in Jesus Christ. 
We'll go right into our service. We're going to have invocation by our own elder Ricky Belton. And then scripture reading will be by Dr. Olivia Isaac Sr. Following our scripture reading, we will have musical selection by our New Direction Choir, You Are My Strength. Please receive them in that order by saying amen. Good morning, saints of God. What a joy it is to be with you one more time. I believe you're doing your invocation this morning, and I will start off by saying, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually go in my mouth. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for this day, because this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're truly going to be glad and rejoice in it. Father God, lift us up in the name of Jesus. Lift our church up right now. Holy Spirit, have your way in the name of Jesus. Touch each and every one, name by name and one by one. Bless our bishop as he's go forth for this morning, Father God. Blessing him and touching him, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Touch our first families in the name of Jesus. Touch Dr. Watts. Lift her up, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I say a prayer for every saint everywhere, all over the United States of America, Father God. And I thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, saints, friends, family, all of our New Direction Online Church community. I welcome you today, and our scripture this morning is from Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. And it reads, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the season when the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Thank you for the reading and hearing of his holy word. And again, that was Acts. Chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. God bless you.
Praise the Lord for the new direction. Choir and selection, you are my strength. Thank God for his blessings. All right. As we move further into the service, we're getting ready to pray and seek God's face as we do uh, each Sunday morning. Uh, prayer is in order always in worship service. Men are always to pray and not faint. We, we, we realize and believe that if we ask God, he'll hear our prayer. We know if he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition we desire of him. Please position yourselves, get ready, find a place where you can kneel if that's what you desire to do during the prayer. Or if you're standing, get in your position, maybe uh, find that favorite couch or move that coffee table out of the way. Some people like to sit down, some people like to lay on their face before the Lord. Some people like to run and shout up and down the hallways of the house, whatever you want to do. Uh, I believe God will be glorified if you do it as unto the Lord. But one of the things we want to do is believe God in prayer, seek him and watch him work it out. Whatever your petition is, why don't you bring it before the Lord as we get ready to pray. But just before we pray, we're going back to one of those old songs of the church. Uh, boy, I was looking and the Lord laid upon my uh, heart a song that I probably haven't sung in a long time and I want you to sing it along with us. The words will be on the screen. Uh, when you sing these old hymns, it gets down into your spirit and, and plants the word of God in your heart and it does a great thing in your life. We're going to try. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. You all remember that song? Come on and help me with it. Verse 1. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Come on. And sinners plunge beneath the flag, lose all their guilty stains. Can you put your hands again? There we go. Lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains. And sinners plunge. Beneath the flood, lose all their gifts. You're doing good, verse 2. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his ears. And there may I go down as he wash all my sins away lift your voice wash all wash all my sins away wash all my sins away are you clapping your hands and then may i go by let's 
Stretch out your hand on today. Uh, your hand of deliverance. Uh, your hand of healing. Uh, stir us and lift us. Uh, what a mighty God we serve. Uh, hallelujah. Angels bow before him. Uh, and angels are heaven and earth towards him. Uh, what a mighty God. Uh, come on, say what a mighty God. Uh, touch us on today and heal our bodies. Uh, sickness and disease. Uh, we rebuke now. Uh, say to the Lord, rebuke him. Uh, the blood. Uh, Somebody help me and say the blood. Come on, the blood. The blood be against you now. Loose your hold and come out of here. Man, be free. Woman, be delivered. Hallelujah, be set free. By the power of God. By his stripes, we are healed. Look on our homes. Look on our families. Our children, our loved ones. Our communities. Lord, the children that are going back to school uh, keep them safe uh, in the name of Jesus uh, in high places uh, where they're making decisions uh, touch the minds uh, touch the hearts uh, in Jesus name uh, we want to lead a quiet uh, and peaceable life uh, God you're able uh, to do exceedingly uh, abundantly uh, above all we can ask uh, and all we can even think uh, you're God all by yourself uh, hallelujah we take the limit off of you uh, come on say have your way Lord uh, have your way have your way uh, hey, uh, glory uh, shower down rain down on your people uh, forgive sin uh, forgive trespasses uh, turn this thing around uh, and make it all right uh, yes come on tell him yes 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 hallelujah put your hands together and give him praise don't wait until the battle was over learn how to shout right now the glory of the lord fill your household the glory of the lord fill your home give joy like a river joy lord Come on, joy, joy. Ah, joy. 
the joy of the Lord. I often say we're not going to wait until the battle is over. We'll shout now. Our God breaks yokes and turns things around. Hallelujah. We command the enemy to get off of you and leave your house in Jesus' name. Uh, come on, somebody say that name, Jesus. Come on, say it again, Jesus. His name is great. His name is wonderful. His name is above every name. At his name, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Come on, once again, give him praise. That's right, come on and magnify his name. Hallelujah. Well, we're moving on in our service on today. I trust that you're receiving from the Lord. We're going to have observations by our own Elder Eric Douglas. Let's receive Elder Douglas by saying amen. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today for our online worship services. To my New Direction family, we were so overwhelmed with gratitude for the outpouring of love, support, and prayers during our time of bereavement. We thank you from the bottom of our heart for what you have done. We appreciate you, and we love you. Sincerely, Sister Jevony Cleveland and family. As always, you can find a complete list of our weekly services by visiting our website. This is your prayer schedule. Start your day off with a time of prayer with Bishop Watts and Word of the Day from our ministerial staff. That's Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. And the around the clock prayer convenes every three hours thereafter. Our special COVID-19 pandemic prayer with Dr. Irene Marshall takes place each Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. Both can be found on the prayer conference line. Stay connected to your church through our website at www.newdirectioncogent.org or you can access the New Direction Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash newdcogent. Please remember to support your church financially through your giving. On the website, simply click on that Go Tithe Offering tab located at the top right corner of the homepage, which will then direct you to Givelify. It's easy, it's simple, and it's also secure. Just follow the prompts on the screen. Please remember to sow something into the building fund to keep things rolling here at our new facility. The new church address is 276 East 9th Street in the city of Upland, California, 91786. If you're mailing your gifts, please send them to P.O. Box 367, Upland, California, 91785. And we thank you for your continued support of the ministry. Please be sure to watch out for emails regarding other upcoming events. Please mark your calendar for this month's Lord Set Us Ablaze Revival. It's going to be awesome. This month, our guest speaker will be the dynamic Bishop Irvin Perry. And we have a wonderful guest soloist all the way from Shreveport, Louisiana. You don't want to miss it. Grief and Bereavement Counseling is now available to our church membership and our social media viewership. It's not too late to take advantage of these services. Next session will be this Tuesday, March the 16th at 7.30 p.m. Meetings will be held via conference line for the next four weeks. You will receive more information once you have registered by visiting our website, www.newdirectioncogent.org and clicking on the tab Grief Counseling. Each of the one-hour session is only $10. Again, you must first register at our church website. Please spread the word if you or someone you may know would benefit from these services. We pray you've been enjoying services each and every week. And please continue to invite your family and friends to tune in on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. These are your observations for the week. Now back to you, Bishop. Praise God. All right. Thank you, Elder Douglas, uh, who does such a very, very fine job keeping us informed of all of the things that are going on at New Direction Church. We praise God for him, and I trust that you've typed in there and you let him know how much you appreciate him, and as well as all of these who work so hard, our technical staff, our Elder Ben Goodman in that choir, and all of the work that is being done, our musicians. Uh, we're looking forward to soon, very soon, coming together in our new sanctuary uh, to worship together. What a great time that will be. We're 
we're just about there. Things are looking pretty good. And uh, maybe we can get a long shot, Brother John, up there and can kind of see where we're at even now. I always like you to be updated as to what is going on in our church. All right, we're getting ready to worship the Lord on our giving. Would you put your hands together and praise God for that opportunity? Come on and praise him and bless him. He's worthy of all of the praise. Let me just say I certainly appreciate how wonderfully the Saints of New Direction you have you have so wonderfully supported your church. Uh, as of this Sunday, actually, this will be one full year. We have not had in-person worship service together, but we've been very strong with the social media. You all have supported uh, and have worked so diligently. And uh, we thank God because of the prayers of the righteous. Looks like this pandemic is, is winding down. And so in our hearts, we're thinking now, uh, it will be nice for us to get back together. So kind of get those thoughts in your mind and heart and pray. Seek God's face. Those of you getting those vaccines and what have you, uh, well, praise God. Amen. We thank God for the vaccines and try to be safe as you can. That is our uh, request to you. Now, as we get ready to give and to share, uh, please get your cell phone out and uh, go to the Givelify app as we normally do. And at that Givelify app location, go ahead and select the envelope you would like to share. We're giving a tithe offering. We're giving missions, building fund. However you're sharing and giving, thank you so much. If you don't have the Givelify app, you know you can go to our website, New Direction. Uh, kojic.org newdirectionkojic.org and there you will see the Givelify app you can use it there or you can also there give in a way of a credit card and debit card many of you give in that manner uh, many of you choose to give using cash app the way to give a cash app is cross your string thank God and then also great thank God for those of you who write out those great big checks thank you and mail them in our mailing address is right there on the screen Many of you already have that down packed, and so that is the way you give by way of check. All right, so now, with that in mind, we're getting ready to pray over our tithers. The Bible lets us know that the tithe belongs to the Lord. Uh, it is the first fruits of our increase. And as you lift your hands to the Lord, uh, I want to pray over the tithers. Come on, tithers, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are so grateful and thankful. Hallelujah. You said bring all the tithe into the storehouse. You've blessed us with jobs and businesses, houses and land. And because of those blessings in our lives, we are thankful. And Lord, as you give us increase, we're very careful now to give back to you that tithe, which means 10%. Some give even over and above the tithe. And uh, don't stop at the 10%. Because we know we can't outgive God. You are the source of our blessing. Let your people be blessed going in and coming out. The head and not the tail. The first and not the last. Make them become the lenders and not the borrowers. Hallelujah. Bless them is my prayer on this Sunday morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you. And now we're going to uh, pray over the offering givers. Offering includes missions and includes also building fund. Uh, I just want to thank God again. So you all have been so generous in the building fund and we're able to move forward simply because of that. So we have missions, building fund, your special gift offering that you'll be giving. You can't out give God. Jesus said give and it shall be given unto you good measure. Pressed out, shaken together and running over. He said he loves the cheerful giver and so I want you to have the right attitude as you prepare your hearts now uh, for this time of giving. We're going to pray. Father, I do thank you and praise you for this time of giving. Lord, as we plant this seed uh, in the fertile ground, I pray, God, that it will produce uh, fruit a hundredfold. Let your people receive the blessings. Give them opportunities, raises on their jobs, situations turn around. It's all right as we trust God and give to him. We believe that and we stand upon your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Let everyone say, thank the Lord. Amen and amen. All right. Go ahead and push that button. Put that check in the mail. Here we go. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. But you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. 
Thank you for what you've shared. Thank you for what you've given. May God richly bless you. Now we're getting ready for uh, the word of the Lord. Is there any word from the Lord? Yes, I believe God's had a word, a rhema word, just for you, a word of encouragement. And so if you would get your Bibles, we'll be dealing with the new, with, I'm sorry, with the King James Version Bible on today. So make sure you have your Bibles ready. Hallelujah. Your heart is fixed. You're in a prayerful mode as we ask the Lord to send his word. Just before we get into the message on today, we will have a musical selection by our new D virtual choir. I've got a reason to praise the Lord, and we really do. Uh, join the virtual choir, and immediately following that selection, we'll be back with the word of the Lord. Everyone say amen. Come on, put those hands together.
so grateful we are so thankful that we can lift our hands and say yes yes to your will and your way we love you send your word on today open up your hearts give us listening ears to hear it thus saith the Lord hearts to receive a word from God we will bless you now the glory of the Lord fill our households the glory the glory the glory, come on somebody say glory. The glory of the Lord, his presence be great. Speak to our hearts, your servants will obey. In Jesus' name. In your Bibles, if you would please, we're going to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews has a word for us. Many believe the writer is the apostle Paul. There is uh, some question whether he was the writer or not. I kind of personally believe he was, but we will uh, just call the writer the writer on today. We're going to the book of Hebrews chapter 12, and we will begin reading at verse number one. Hebrews 12 and one. Some familiar ground, Hebrews 12 and one. Wherefore, seeing we also are passed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience for the race that is set uh, before us. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. One more verse, verse 3. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. We're stopping right there. May God bless the reading and also the hearing of his word on today. For the next few moments, I want you to uh, sit attentively and hear what thus saith the Lord. For the next few moments, we'll be uh, speaking to you from the subject matter, stay in the race. I want you to look at somebody, catch their eye, please, in your home, wherever you may be, and tell them the something is. Stay in the race. All right. 
Praise God. I, I, I trust that you understand this is going to be one of those messages of encouragement because you need to be encouraged to stay in the race as, 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 as this passage of Scripture sort of alludes to uh, that type of a competition. Uh, the 1992 Summer Olympics, that was a few years ago, but it featured a heart-rendering moment. And uh, if you were around at that time, you'll probably remember what I'm going to tell you. It was in the 400-meter uh, semifinals. British runner Derek Redman tore his hamstring muscle, and he fell hard on the track on that day. Uh, we saw him on the TV struggling to get back to his feet, and he began to hobble. That leg wouldn't even move. Uh, but he was determined to complete the race. His, his father ran from the stands to help him off the track. Uh, but Derek refused to, uh, to quit the race. He didn't want to quit. He leaned on his daddy, and the two of them limped to the finish line together. It was accompanied by uh, a deafening applause of thousands assembled there that day. Uh, you may remember that. I remember it. It was a great thing. And I think they played it over and over many times. Uh, but we, liked, we like to hear stories about people who just won't give up. Quitters are, aren't much of an inspiration. But people who stay with their commitment, even though uh, the going gets tough, is very inspiring. Uh, do you remember, do you remember uh, the man who came to Jesus and said, Lord, I will follow you whithersoever you go. And, and Jesus looked at him and told the man, he said, before, listen, before you, but before you make this commitment, this kind of commitment, you need to realize that the, uh, the, the foxes have holes and, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. It was, it was food for thought. And so I, I want to share with you, the, to follow Jesus, it takes commitment and it takes some staying power. Becoming a Christian requires that you count up the cost. As Jesus told the man that I just referenced, uh, uh, that's the reason why on today we're considering Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, uh, because they're so important. It helps us to have staying power. Writers of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews is not uh, comparing the Christian life to a, a wind sprint race, you know, uh, but, but rather to a marathon race. And you see in a wind sprint race, you, you run as fast as you can for a very short distance because speed is the critical factor. But in a marathon race, uh, endurance is the critical factor. And the concern is that during the long distance run, the runner will not grow weary. He will not lose heart. He will not give up. He must finish the race, and it's a long race. And so the Apostle Paul, in his second letter to Timothy, he wrote these, uh, he wrote these words. He says, he said, I fought a good fight. That's in 2 Timothy 4 and 7. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept uh, the faith. You see, finishing the race is critically important to all who are followers of Jesus Christ. It's not how fast you start. It's, it's the fact that you can endure and make it to the end. Uh, a lot of folks started out, but uh, they fell along the uh, wayside somewhere. But I just believe I'm talking to some folks that are determined that they're going to make it, determined that they're going to uh, uh, complete this race. Uh, reminded of an old mother, uh, her name was Mother Marshall. Uh, years ago, in my church as a little boy, in testimony service, she would always stand up uh, as the saints were allowed to just spontaneously sing in those days. She would stand up and sing that song, I'm going through. Uh, no matter what others do. I, I, I made up my mind, something like that, I'm going through. Well, the Hebrew, in Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, contains at least three pieces of advice that will help you faithfully run in the race. Uh, 
three, three of them. I'm going to look at three again. I think I did three last week. Three. Number one, be inspired by those who have gone before you. That's the first thing I want you to do. Be inspired by those who have gone before you. Hebrews 12 and 1 in our text says, Wherefore, seeing you also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Inspiration is important. You need to be inspired by those who have gone before you. Remember that you are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. So be inspired by those who have already run the race. Even before you came on the scene, some folks made it. There's been some strong people. They made it. And basically they're saying, if I can do it, you can do it too through the help of the Lord. Uh, chapter 12 Verse number one uh, in, in our lesson begins with the first word. The first word of the 12th chapter is wherefore. Why wherefore? Why, why stop there? Why wherefore? Well, wherefore connects it back to the previous chapter. Now, the previous chapter is chapter 11. Now, in chapter 11, the writer of Hebrews gives a long list of people who have been found faithful. Let's look at a couple. For example, in, in, in verse number seven, it mentions Noah. It, 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 it took Noah 120 years to build the ark, and, and it was never easy for him. I think you all know the story. He, his assignment was to build the ark and to preach, and he built and preached for uh, 120 years. He preached daily, uh, warning the people of the coming judgment. But here's the thing. Nobody listened. And, and how would you like to preach and, and make an altar call all, and nobody ever got saved? Uh, nobody listened to preaching Noah. Yet he kept on preaching and he kept on building. He found that as his excitement. And so he kept on preaching. He kept on building. And, and finally, when the floods came, the ark was the means of his salvation. The very thing he was working on was the thing that saved him. Uh, uh, so be inspired and, and be like Noah. Uh, what are you saying, brother preacher? Stay in the race. Noah stayed in the race. He's our inspiration and stay in the race. In verse number 8 of chapter 11 of Hebrews, Abraham is, the, is, is in his old age. He's, he's told that his wife Sarah would bear him a son in her old age. Uh, uh, then God took that son when they got that promised son. He told him to take that promised son and offer him as a sacrifice. Uh, it was not easy. It was not an easy assignment, but Abraham remain faithful to God even in that challenge. Uh, he stayed in the race. Uh, and so uh, let his life inspire you to do the same thing. Uh, look at somebody, catch somebody across the room and tell them, stay in the race. Uh, well, in verse number 22, uh, it, 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 it is the story in chapter 11 of Hebrews is the story of Joseph. Uh, Joseph was sold, and remember, into slavery, and he was sold by his own brothers. Uh, uh, and, and, and in Egypt, he, 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 as a slave, he, he was accused of crimes that he did not commit and was thrown in the prison. Uh, uh, he could have become discouraged. Uh, he could have become, say, you know, man, I don't know. I don't deserve this. Uh, I didn't do anything wrong. Home, but, but Joseph kept on, uh, kept on, he kept his faith in the Lord. But even though he kept his faith, uh, he kept on sinking and he sank about as low as a person can get. Uh, yet he remained faithful to God. Uh, he refused to give up and was determined to stay in the race. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh, because staying in the race, uh, has benefits. Uh, what benefits does it have? You've got to follow Joseph a little while longer. Uh, uh, he stayed in the race and received some of the benefits because everything in Joseph's life uh, uh, began to change. He, he finally hit the point of a turnaround. Uh, overnight, he was uh, uh, he was promoted the prime minister of Egypt. Uh, he's now in control of the money and the grain. Uh, hallelujah. In the land, the food, and even the people all over Egypt. Uh, he, went, he went from the bottom 
to the top because he was determined that I'm going to stay in the race. Uh, look at somebody and tell him again, stay in uh, the race. Uh, well, Hebrews chapter 11 goes on, and it's a fantastic chapter. Uh, uh, it talks about Moses, talks about Samson, talks about Samuel, talks about David, uh, and many more. These are Old Testament saints. Uh, hallelujah. Old te these Old Testament saints are the great cloud of witnesses the Hebrew writer talks about us. Uh, they successfully ran the race uh, and, and, and now have passed that baton to you and I. Uh, and we, uh, we are now to look back at them and gain some inspiration. Uh, hallelujah. So why don't you help me here again with this lesson. Uh, and I, I'm having you talk to people on the day because somebody needs to be inspired. Uh, somebody may about ready to give up and they need somebody to pat them on the back and tell them they can make it. So would you catch somebody's eye and say don't lose heart uh, and then tell them don't give up. Uh, hallelujah. And point your finger right at them and say uh, don't quit. Stay in uh, the race. Uh, hallelujah. Come on. Give God praise here for a moment. Uh, and if you should hear uh, about or if you yourself should ever uh, become discouraged. Uh, I'm going to help you here on the day. I want you to think not only of the great saints of Hebrew chapter 11 for inspiration, but also I want you to think on the great saints who stayed in the race during your own lifetime. Uh, you've got some champions around you. Uh, you've got some folks that did it right. Uh, you've got some folks that went through and stayed with God. Uh, hallelujah. They are our inspiration. Uh, I want you to think of the wonderful saints uh, who prayed earnestly uh, and specifically uh, for you. I know you can think of some. Uh, when you wasn't, 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 wasn't quite making it quite right, and I looked at you, you didn't, you didn't look right, uh, but they prayed for you. Uh, thank God for praying saints. Uh, uh, that one who always had your, had a word of encouragement. Uh, I can remember uh, saints patting me on the back and saying, son, you can make it. Uh, just hang in there. Just stay with God. Uh, hallelujah. And they placed their confidence uh, in you and I. Can you remember? Remember in your life uh, when people around you were like that? Remember how you, you faithfully, they were faithful. Yeah? You saw them. Huh? I remember as a young man, I saw the saints. Huh? I saw them faithful to God 24-7. Huh? Huh? They strive to faithfully huh? meet with God. Huh? Hallelujah. In worship service uh, and to meet me at the door. Huh? You see, we are to encourage one another. Huh? Hallelujah. In the Lord. Huh? Uh, and they made up their mind. I'm going to meet the Lord today, uh, but I want to meet you also and encourage you. Uh, hallelujah. Many times uh, they say, young man, you can make it. Uh, some of those old saints uh, would walk miles to church. Uh, some of them caught two and three buses uh, just to get to worship service. Uh, they didn't have a whole lot of money then, uh, and so they would cook fried chicken dinners uh, and pay the church bills. Uh, they sold barbecue uh, to pay the church more Mortgage. Uh, many of them uh, gave the last dollar to another needy saint. Uh, uh, they walked the streets uh, and they looked sanctified. Uh, and they passed out tracks uh, and prayed for people right on the streets. Uh, some of them lost their jobs uh, because they refused uh, to work on a Sunday morning. Uh, times got hard, uh, but they stayed the course. Uh, I wonder if you can remember uh, and grab some inspiration. Uh, even when they were sick, they refused to give up on God because they were determined, I'm going to stay in the race. Come what may, sink or swim, I started with Jesus and I'm going all of the way. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, shout glory to God. Hallelujah. So be inspired uh, by those that have gone on before. Uh, that was point number one. Uh, point number two. Uh, be prepared uh, for the struggles uh, because they will come. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, you haven't been promised uh, a flowery rose of ease, uh, but hard times will come. Uh, 
How do I prepare, brother preacher, uh, for hard times and struggles in the future? Uh, well, I'm glad you asked that question uh, because the Hebrew writer said, uh, hallelujah, let us lay aside uh, every weight uh, and the sin uh, which does so easily beset us uh, and let us run with patience uh, the race that is set before us. Uh, let's stop right there. Uh, you've got to ask God uh, to help you to lay aside uh, that I can't help but sin. Uh, hallelujah, that so easily uh, slips me up. Uh, all the time I keep falling over it. Uh, God, I need your help. Uh, help me to set it aside uh, and then set aside also. Uh, set aside, uh, the Bible says, every weight. Uh, so what's the difference, preacher? Uh, what is the weight, bishop? Uh, what do you mean by the weight? I know what the sin is. Uh, but what do you mean by the weight? Uh, well, uh, in a race, uh, you have to travel light. Uh, I want you to hear what I'm saying. Somebody say, help us, Lord. Uh, I remember when as a boy, uh, I lived in a small town uh, in western Pennsylvania. Uh, it was called Elizabeth, PA. Uh, Elizabeth was considered uh, to be a, a living way uh, out in the country. Uh, folks says country folks live out there. Uh, but it was a haven for kids. Uh, we had a whole lot of fun. Uh, early every autumn, uh, a bunch of us kids uh, would run and travel. Uh, several miles uh, beyond the woods, uh, beyond the meadows, uh, and we went to where it was uh, a wild apple orchard. Uh, we went there to pick apples. Uh, Hallelujah, we replaced those back apples. Uh, they were delicious and red uh, in a big cloth bag uh, and make our trip uh, back home uh, carrying that bag uh, because the apples uh, were so large uh, and they were sweet. Uh, we often had our cloth bags uh, weighted down uh, with those fresh apples. Uh, man, look at all the apples uh, I have in my bag. Uh, I'm going to eat some apple pie. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to eat these apples uh, and enjoy them when I get home. Uh, but because the trip uh, home was a long way, uh, the weight of those apples uh, soon became uh, too much to carry. Uh, we found ourselves uh, having to make some choices uh, of lightening up the load. Uh, if we wanted to make it home, uh, that meant uh, that some of those big, uh, some of those large, uh, good tasting, uh, plump, uh, precious, uh, ripe, uh, red apples uh, had to be laid aside. Uh, Nobody wanted to lay them aside. We wanted to take them home, but we couldn't take them home because they were too heavy. We had to make the hard choice, lay them aside. So you see, not every weight in your life is a sin, but if something good going on, hallelujah, in your life, but it's too heavy to carry, we call it a heavy load. It's hindering you uh, from making it home uh, to live with God uh, in eternity. Uh, and so you got to make a choice. Uh, you got to make up your mind. Uh, I've got to lay this aside. Uh, it's not a sin, uh, but it's stopping my progress. Uh, I'm not getting where uh, the Lord would have me to be. Uh, things uh, that are taking your time away uh, from serving God. Uh, every time it's time to worship. Uh, something pops up it's a good thing but it's hindering my way in God you got to consider it a weight and lay it aside I heard the songwriter say I would rather have Jesus than silver or gold I would rather have Jesus than riches untold I would rather have Jesus than houses or land so lay it aside it's slowing you down it's slowing your progress hallelujah lay it aside it'll be worth it all when you see Jesus oh hallelujah listen sometimes things hallelujah a marathon runner I don't know too much about marathon running but they tell me that there are two critical times in that race the first one is right at the beginning 
when you start that race uh, you're feeling good uh, and you're tempted uh, to run too fast uh, too soon uh, but you've got to set the pace uh, some folks started out too fast uh, but I'm encouraging you uh, to set your pace uh, somebody say hallelujah that's the first obstacle uh, the second critical time uh, in a marathon race uh, is at the halfway point uh, hallelujah uh, you suddenly uh, realize uh, I've got just much far to go uh, as I've already come uh, my strength is giving out uh, and they call that uh, hitting the wall uh, some folks uh, have hit the wall uh, but I want to encourage you uh, to stay in the race uh, you come uh, hallelujah too far uh, endure a little while longer uh, don't you give up uh, but bishop uh, i feel like uh, i can't put one foot uh, in in front of another uh, any longer uh, hallelujah and so they keep uh, hallelujah wanting to give up uh, but all saints of god uh, if you feel like giving up uh, i want you to hear uh, point number three uh, point number three is uh, fix your eyes uh, on jesus uh, i heard the hebrew writer say uh, looking unto jesus uh, the author and finisher of our faith uh, who for the joy uh, was set before him uh, what did he do brother preacher uh, he endured the cross uh, despising the shame uh, and sat down uh, at the right hand of the throne of god uh, somebody say has uh, for consider him uh, that endured such contradiction uh, of sinners against himself uh, lest you be wearied uh, and faint in your mind uh, i want you to think about it uh, jesus uh, was persecuted uh, beyond reason uh, but he stayed the course uh, he stayed in the race uh, he paid the price uh, for our sins uh, every christian uh, needs to fix their eyes uh, on jesus uh, don't look to the right uh, don't look to the left uh, because when things get hard uh, it's easy to say uh, i'm through uh, i can't go no more uh, but instead uh, fix your eyes uh, on the author uh, and the finisher uh, of our faith uh, jesus prayed uh, hallelujah uh, that this cup uh, of crucifixion uh, would be removed uh, but the answer came back uh, there is no other way uh, and so we stayed in the race uh, look at somebody say stay in the race uh, unrighteous men uh, set jesus uh, before unjust judges uh, they told lies on him uh, they spoke falsely accused him uh, but he was not discouraged uh, he stayed in the race uh, they stripped him of his clothes uh, and humanly beat him uh, almost to death uh, but he stayed in the race uh, they spit upon him uh, they verbally abused him uh, but he would not give up uh, he stayed uh, in the race uh, people uh, treated him with kindness uh, he treated people with kindness uh, he healed their bodies uh, he gave them food uh, fed them with two fish uh, and five loaves of bread uh, but the same people uh, turned their back uh, on him uh, but he was not he was not discouraged uh, he stayed uh, in the race uh, hallelujah when his own disciples uh, ran for fear uh, of persecution uh, he was all by himself uh, but he stayed uh, in the race uh, i want to encourage you uh, he could have called uh, 10,000 angels uh, to destroy the world uh, but to set him free uh, but he could have called uh, 10,000 angels uh, the writer says that he died uh, alone uh, for you and me uh, i just stopped by uh, to let you know uh, you can make it uh, pull yourself up uh, wipe the tears from your eyes uh, take out your handkerchief wipe your brow uh, catch your second wind uh, you can make it uh, come what may uh, i started with jesus uh, and i'm going all the way uh, somebody say all the way uh, come on give him praise
and magnify his name. He's worthy of grace. Come on. Come on and bless him, saints of God. Be encouraged. Hallelujah. Stay in the race. Glory. Come on, shout glory. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Well, the Holy Spirit lets me know somebody was, was and is kind of on the edge. Ah, I haven't been in church in a long time and have all of this aggravation, have all of this temptation. And sometimes you feel like maybe I'll just ease out the door. But I hear the Holy Spirit saying, you can make it. Be encouraged. God sees your need and sees your situation. You're not in this thing alone. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'll bring you through and I'll bring you out all right. Stay in the race. Bow with me in prayer. Father, I do thank you and praise you for the word of the Lord. Thank you for the power of God that's present even now. I thank you, Lord, because the word of God comes to encourage us on today. There's a great reward for those Paul said, a great crown of rejoicing. A great crown for those who endure and run this marathon race. Somebody put it like this, is not given to the swift or the strong, but to that one that will endure to the end. Endurance is the key. The Holy Spirit will give you the strength to endure and to make it. I want to pray for you, Father. Bless the saints. Put a smile on their face again. Restore the joy, the joy of our salvation. Joy, joy, joy. The joy of the Lord be your strength. Put a new song in our heart, a new dance step in our lives. Ah, hallelujah. Say that the Lord rebuke you. You thought you had us bound, but the Lord delivered us. The spirit of deliverance be great here. The spirit of the power of God touch your life and change you completely around. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, for your glory. Now, Lord, now, Lord, now, Lord. For those who do not know you as Lord and Savior, in fact, I want to speak right to you that are not saved. What do you mean not saved? You've not given your life to Jesus Christ. You're not living for Christ. Some are backsliders. Some started out and stopped. Others never even gave Jesus a try. We're closer to the return of the Lord today than we've ever been. This is not the same world it was just 10, 15 years ago. Time is winding up. It's much too dangerous out there to not know Jesus and not have made preparation for your eternity. And so I want to challenge you to give your life to Jesus Christ and you can do it right now. Tomorrow is not promised to us. The day is the day of salvation. The day that you hear my voice, the scripture would say, heart, not your heart. Bishop Watts, it sounds like me. I need a change in my life, and I believe you do. And you know what? The Spirit of the Lord is here to change you right now. The Lord will receive you just as you are. You don't have to clean yourself up and come, but just as you are, come to the Lord. He'll do the cleaning for you. And so, if that's your desire, you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want to pray with you what is known as the prayer of salvation would you please bow your heads and I will give you the words to say simply say these words mean them give them to God and he will hear them and change your life come on let's pray say Lord Jesus I'm so sorry for all of my sins please forgive me Lord I want to be saved I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins he was buried rose again on the third day. And 
And I accept Jesus into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Come on in, Jesus. Save me from my sins. I will live for you for the rest of my life. I give you my life and I give you my heart. Tell him, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer and you really meant that prayer with all of your heart, the Spirit of the Lord now has moved upon you. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Praying that serious prayer of salvation, you are now a new creature in Christ Jesus. If you prayed that prayer, maybe you're a backslider. Maybe you've just given your heart to the Lord. I want to encourage you to get in touch with us. We want to pray with you, send you some material, and work with you and get you connected with New Direction Church. If you need a church home, you desire to be a member of this church, whether physically or virtually, you have that opportunity. Just simply on the screen, you'll see uh, how you can get in touch with us. NewDirectionCoaching.org slash connect. NewDirectionCoaching.org slash connect. If you'll go there, it will guide you through how to make connection with our church. What a great church this is. And we love having you. Those of you that gave your heart to Jesus Christ, welcome to the family of God. May God bless you as we get ready to go down from this place and dismiss this service. Would you bow with me, please? Father, thank you for the time we've assembled together. Thank you for the families that gathered around their computers or television sets or wherever they may have been. Bless every household. Hallelujah. Meet that need. Turn that situation around and make everything all right. And now may the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say, thank the Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. Uh -huh.